Good morning, my gorgeous friends on the internet. In today's episode, I'm gonna give you a list of the top 10 best CSS one-liners. They're not all one-liners, that's a lie, actually. A couple of them are not, but I needed to make a top 10 list and the title needed to be pretty, so I'll deal with it, okay? Oh, and also let me know down in the comments, which ones of these do you know and which ones you don't? Or maybe you have a new one that I haven't heard of. Write it down in the comments. You know what also you could write down in the comments? Your opinion on my courses down at developedbyed.com. So go ahead and check them out if you're interested to learn more about web development and JavaScript and React and all that good jazz. I have full-length courses that are project-based that you're gonna enjoy. Well, you enjoyed it because you got it, didn't you? Okay, let's get going. Okay, for number one, we have something called writing mode. So this allows you to basically flip a text over in a vertical position or horizontal, which is default. So if you wanna have a cool website like the ones on awards or stuff like that, where they flip the text in a vertical position, all you need to do is add writing mode vertical. And that's it. Now, if we take a look, look at that. We have a nice vertical text added there. And yeah, that's it. I guess if you want to put it next to by its next to each other, you can do a display flex. And that's it. Hit save. Boom. Scale this up and automatically looks fancy. Number two on the list is one of my favorites actually. I haven't really seen it used as much as I wanted it to, and it's called gap. So if you're using flex and you're doing display flex, in this case, I just have a container here with three items, three boxes, and I wanna add some spacing in between the items. All I need to do is not go to OBS, but go here to my container. So I have display flex and just add the property gap. And then I can specify a number of pixels like 24 and boom done and you can also customize this to only be on columns or on row by adding column row column row column gap or row gap and that's a really simple one but really useful okay so go on and gap it up that sounds weird. Here's a cool little way that you can flip over an image either horizontally or vertically. So if you want somebody to point in another way, flip over a face. Why would you want to flip over a face? In this case, we have a car here. So if I want to flip this over horizontally, all I need to do is do transform, scale, and do minus one. And I can do either X here or Y. So let's do X in this case, and boom, you are in the UK, bitch. I love this one because it used to be so complicated back in the day, but now it's really, really simple. So let's say I have a page, two pages here, and when I click on an anchor tag, I want to smoothly scroll down to this one. But as you can see with the default behavior, it just automatically jumps down like that. Oof. So to add a smooth behavior, all you need to do is, well, you need to have your anchor set up here, right? So it takes us to page two. It has an ID of page two. And then just grab your HTML and say scroll behavior, smooth, like that. And that's it, it's safe. Take a look. That is crazy. That is absolutely crazy. Look at that, one line of CSS and you have a nice smooth animation going. This is a really, really cool one if you want to make like Airbnb type cards, carousel type snap cards. Now you can browse each listing on Airbnb like that. Well, in our case, I have it one, two, three, four, five, and we're gonna look through the code so you understand this a bit better. But if I go here and stop, nothing happens. So what I wanna do is when I scroll like that, it should snap to that, and then snap to that, and snap to that. So what is this, how is this code set up? And then I'll show you kind of what we have. We have a container here, and just a bunch of divs inside, okay? So a container with a bunch of divs. And all I did was I set the height and the width to them, uh, and add a display flex with an overflow X of scroll, okay? So we can scroll. And then the min height on the divs take up basically the same height as this, all right? So if I don't have this overflow X on it, you're gonna see that all the content overflows like that. But with this one, we get the nice scroll bar. Bar, <laughs> scroll bar. So how do we add this thing? So all you need to do is, it's two properties, but it's really short. Scroll, scroll, snap a line. I cannot speak anymore. Scroll, squirrel, scroll, snap a line. And we'll do uh, X and we'll say mandatory, mandatory. Okay, so you can do it Y as well. If you want to make like a, you know, like you scroll up and down and then it snaps to the page, you can do that as well. 
So that's one. And then to each individual item, you have to tell it basically where it wants to snap to. So scroll, snap, align, and we basically want it center. So now when we go like that, it's not working. What's not working? X mandatory, uh, not align here, type, my apologies. Scroll snap type, so X mandatory, and boop, look at that. When I stop, it snaps to it. Now here's the cool thing about this is you have a bit more control over it. You can also define something called proximity. And this basically lets you, see it doesn't snap to it. You can kind of move around freely, but if it's really close to the edge, only then it snaps. So that's, yeah, you can kind of play around with this. It's quite cool. This gives like a more natural scrolling experience to be honest. But yeah, really like it. Really cool little property that you can use. Scroll, snap, type. Okay, I absolutely love this one. Do you know how when you have a text area, you can just grab the point here and resize it to whatever size you want? Well, you can do that to any element you want by using resize both. So go to your code, go here to box. All you need to do is add a overflow of auto. And then all you need to do is say resize and say both. And that's it. Take a look. Now I can grab the end of this and absolutely resize it to whatever size I want. It's always going to keep centered because I have a display flex on it. Well, look at that. That is pretty cool. If you want to constrain it to only one axis, you can do resize. I think it's vertical. Yeah, and then also horizontal as well. And look at that. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, that's it. That's just a fun one, really. Good luck finding something useful with this one. Here's a cool little trick to cut your text off. So if you have loads here and you don't want all of it to show up, you can truncate it. Um, you're gonna see articles use this a lot where only kind of a preview shows up. So the way you can achieve that in CSS is just grab your paragraph from your box, add a display of WebKit box to it like that. And then you can specify how many lines you wanna a show using line clamps. So if I do one, it's only gonna do one. It's also gonna add the dot 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 at the end there, which is really cool. So let's say in this case, I want three. Boom, easy peasy. And then you add the orientation as well, vertical and an overflow hidden. Uh, because if you don't do that, then you can just see everything and scroll won't work as well. So make sure you do over overflow of hidden. And that's it, really simple, but really effective. Let's say I have one of those fancy MacBook websites and I wanna add a linear gradient to our text here. Well, how can we do that? Well, if you go and add a background color to it, or if you try a color of gradient, it's not gonna work. If you add a gradient, not gonna work. If you add it to the background, it works on the background. But the way we can solve this issue is add it to the background and then we make the text transparent and we'll basically mask it to the text. All right, so what we can do is add this property here of WebKit background clip text. So that basically, if I remove this comment, there we go, I'll still keep this commented out. You're not gonna see what this does, but essentially, you can actually kind of see it. See, it clips that gradient to the text. So behind this black text is that gradient now. But what we want to do is make this text in the front transparent. So that's exactly what we do in this next line. Text fill color will do transparent and get rid of that black. And now the background pops true and we have this nice linear gradient. Here's a problem I see loads of people having and the solution is so, so simple. So let's say we have a case where, again, we have a box and just an image inside and no heights or widths are specified. So by default, that image is gonna go loco. As you can see, it stretches all the way out. It doesn't care where the box is and that's it. So what you do normally is you add a width of 100% to this and then, okay, so that scaled properly, but it's gonna scale according to the size of the box. So if it's not specified, it's still gonna take up all the space. So we can add a width and specify a width of like 25 rem to it. So boom, okay, that's fine, that works. All right, it literally fits to the box's size. The problem here is, well, if I wanna maybe have the box a bit more vertical, so I can do something like height 25, let's do 40 rem, all right? Kind of like an Instagram-y type post. 
all right i don't want this i want this to kind of fill it all the way up so yeah you do the same thing right you do height 100 percent so it fills it up but here's the problem i want to get to you have this weird stretching effect so if you ever encounter this weird stretching effect all you need is this object fit property and i think by default it's contain uh, but if you want to get rid of the stretching aspect ratio problem all you need to do is say fill not fill sorry cover there we go that's the one and boom so what it does it actually zooms in on the image and it stops that distortion from happening the last i want to cover is something very very useful it's called pointer events and what pointer events does it basically stops us from selecting an item any item so we can add pointer events none and now i cannot select this item anymore now this in combination with opacity zero is really strong because we can animate this text popping in. And as you can see, I cannot select it. If I don't have this pointer events none on it, I can still, if I know where the text is, see how the cursor changes? And depending what, what type of elements you have, if you have an image, you can actually grab it. Uh, but yeah, so why do we use this rather than just doing something like display none? Because that actually gets rid of it completely. The thing though here is when it comes to animation. So if I want to animate this in, on display none it's not gonna work so I can do something like um, I'll just add like a hover to this uh, well you cannot even do hover on it but um, let's just add an animation in here I'll do a quick keyframe so keyframes and then we'll call this fade and then we'll do it from 0% all right to 100% like that all right, so all I want is the opacity to come in from zero to one. So basic fade. Okay, cool. So let's get rid of this for now and we'll add animation here. And we'll say fade. Duration is going to be one second. Timing function will do ease in. All right. And we can also add a delay to it of one second. All right. So there we go, it fades in, cool. All right, let's see what display none. So if I go here and do a display none, well, no, no, nothing's fading in, God damn it! Why? Well, the element doesn't exist. So when you add display none, it actually gets removed from the DOM tree. But if we do a pointer event of none and opacity of zero, we get the same effect basically, but we also get the animation working just fine. There we go. You can make it so it sticks there at the end, but you get the point. It does work. Yay! So that's gonna be it for me today. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Drop down a subscribe if you did. And yeah, I'm working on quite a few things these days. I uh, wanna do a full stack, uh, not a burn stack, but like a Firebase, which we have like a full project. So we'll see if I can get that done by Saturday. No promises, but I'll try. And also, I've been messing around a lot with Blender uh, and I want to do a challenge, so that might be coming soon as well. But if you want to let me know, maybe you want to see something else, write it down in the comments and I'll, I'll get on it. Okay. Rawr. <laughs>